Welcome back to Tipsy Whiskey Shenanigans. I'm Steven and today, tonight, whenever the heck you're watching this, we are getting into another barrel product. This time we're getting into Barrel Whiskey's American Vatted Malt. We're talking about American Vatted Malts today. So this is a product from Barrel. Obviously, you know, we all know Barrel, Barrel Seagrass, Barrel Dovetail, Barrel, Barrel, Barrel. I mean, it's Barrel with an extra L. They do wonderful, wonderful, wonderful blending. The word vatted malt essentially just means blended malt, which is cool because we don't see, I know, I know the world of, you know, malt, like American malt is finally kind of starting to grow. It's mostly in the craft scene, but this is the first attempt at like a real cash strength, large produce one that I'm aware of. I could be wrong, but this is the first large produced cash strength blended malt from America that I'm aware of. Obviously it's from Barrel. It is 117.5 proof and it comes from a boatload of distilleries all around the country. And so it looks like it's a blend of 1.5 to eight year old single malts. And let's see here, distilled in New York, Texas, Indiana, New Mexico, Washington, and AZ. I'm assuming the Indiana is MGP, and I know for a fact that the AZ is Del Bach, um, because, well, I'm from AZ and I really like Del Bach. But essentially, it's a bunch of cash rank single malts from around the country blended together to make one massive cash rank single malt at $90. I'm dedicating this cork pop shout out to my first Patreon, Peter Miller. <coughs> Thank you for the support, man. I appreciate you. I've been getting heavily into American single malts recently, so when I saw this on the shelf in Tucson, I could not resist, so I picked it right up. Let's go ahead and get on the nose. Wow, it's it's malty for sure. A nice like dried cranberries. Little bit of like a hay note, malty like barley note. A little smoky, but not too smoky. I know the AZ stuff at least, I'm, or I'm assuming, I I should not assume, but I'm assuming the AZ stuff is their mesquite smoked malt. So I was expecting a lot more smoky punch, but this is kind of, it's light, it's delicate. I mean, the whiskey overall is not light and delicate, but the flavor profile, it's way lighter, more delicate than I would have expected. A little bit of like a peach ring. There's a nice little like earthy smoke on there though. Like it's it's so much like bright, vibrant, fruity characteristics, darkness, and then like this nice like layer of smoke. There's definitely a nice little bit of like almost like a dilly licorice note that kind of reminds me of a rye as well as some nice like solid baking spices, like a little bit of like a black pepper hint. So much like dark, dense fruit. Kind of reminds me of like a fruit leather, like kind of almost like a Texas malt, which I'm sure the Texas malt in here is probably from Balcones, so that kind of tracks. But it has that like dried out, like fruity, like raisin, dried cranberries, dried apricots, fruit on the nose. And it's a weird little like tobacco-y um, oak, a nice like barley. The barley is definitely prevalent. This is clearly a single malt. And then there's that nice layer of smoke. The nose is fantastic. I absolutely love this. I could sit in this nose all day. It's complex, but also inviting. And there's a weird, there's a weird spicy rye-esque note on there. There's that like dill, black pepper, licorice note that I'm getting that I typically will get on some rice, but I'm getting it on this. So like, this is a very, very intriguing note. So let's go ahead and get on the palette. Wow, that is intense. It starts off an explosion of dried fruit, chocolate, goes into a nice like tobacco note almost. And then it transfers about mid palate to the sweet, creamy smoke. Yeah, 
chocolate, dried fruit, and then mid palate. So the first, the first half of the palate, there's almost no smoke. It's that like dark, dense. This totally reminds me of Texas single malt so, so much. And I know there's Texas and Arizona single malt in there. So like, no surprise, the climates are very, very similar, but there's so much dense, like chocolate, tobacco, dried fruit, butterscotch, vanilla, like creamy caramels. And then about halfway through, so the first half of the palate, there's no smoke whatsoever. And then it just like halfway through, it's like smoke and it just gradually kind of spikes up into this nice, like earthy smokiness. It's not, it's not like peat where it's like briny. It's just like an earthy smoke. It's those aggressive, like Texas, Arizona, aggressive, like dried fruits, kind of, you know, aggressive chocolate, tobacco flavor profile. But then there's, there's so much like luscious vanillas, caramels, a little bit of like a cinnamon baking spice going on in there. And then it just finishes into a very nice, like smoky caramel. But where sometimes on some like peated scotches, the smoke is almost abrasive. Like it's just too much smoke. This smoke is fantastic. It it just complements everything that's already there. It's dark, dense, and then that nice like sweet vanilla aspects come in and it kind of smooths over the smoke. It's just overall, this is a damn good blend. I don't know how else to say this. Um, I'm not the biggest fan of Barrel. Full disclosure, I've tried some of their stuff and I think it's exuberantly overpriced for what it is. That being said, I'm a big fan of this whiskey. This and Seagrass are by far my two favorite barrel products so far. I'm new to the world of American single malt, so I'm kind of apprehensive to grade this as well as I am, but I'm just gonna be honest and speak from the heart and I think this is a solid a minus whiskey. This is fantastic. If you can find this at the $90 I found it for, I purchased this for $85 personally, but I'm grading at 90. I love this stuff. It's a fantastic ride. It brings out all that dried fruit maltiness that this is what I wish Highland scotches were or blended scotches were for that matter in Scotland. Like if I had a $90 scotch that was as good as this, I'd be over like over the hill or whatever the saying is like, I would be swooning with that. This is fantastic, fantastic. It's a little bit aggressive. So if you're someone who doesn't like an aggressive kind of like Texas, Arizona, like, ugh, then this might not be what's for you, but I'm born, bred, Arizona, United States of America. So I like aggressive things. I'm used to the heat. Don't sleep on this bottle. This bottle is amazing whiskey, blended very well. And I personally really love it. I think it's an amazing wild ride. It's super complex, super enjoyable. Do us a favor though. Like, comment, subscribe. Let me know if you guys have any better suggestions or other suggestions of maybe American single malts or blended American single malts. I know I haven't had a lot. I'm blend. I'm basing a lot of my like grading process off of scotch, which is a totally different realm. But honestly, I think I might be a bigger fan of American single malts than scotch. That's just me though. I am who I am. Also check out the Facebook, Instagram, and the Patreon. The link for the Patreon is down there below. We appreciate y'all so much for your support. Cheers. We'll see you later.